Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. A square is inscribed in the region between a quarter circle with radius 1 and center at the origin. So this is the origin here. Let me go ahead and mark that. This will be the origin, 0, 0. And the parabola y equals negative x squared minus x and as you see here, this parabola has two roots, one of which is zero. And we need to find the area of the square. Okay, X additional information is given so that we don't get it wrong. The base of the square is horizontal. So basically, we do have a segment that is parallel to the x-axis, and that makes up one of the sides of the square. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video at this point and give this problem a try before you see the solution. Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna be making some connections here, as always, right? How do we solve these pro problems? Uh, we do make connections. So let's go ahead and pick a nice color. I don't know what's gonna be a nice color here, but let's just go ahead and go with the blue. Okay, so what kind of connections am I gonna make? Well, this problem could be considered an easier geometry puzzle because we're not making that many connections. First of all, let's go ahead and assume that the side length for the square is x. So that's going to be x, and this is going to be x, and this is going to be x, and this one is going to be x as well. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and connect the center of the quarter circle to one of the vertices of the square so that we can kind of use what we always use, which is called the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this type of connection and that's going to be I think good enough to be able to solve this problem but of course before that we have to deal with another issue okay so we do know that the side length for the square is x but what about this length right we have to figure out this length so we can use the Pythagorean theorem here because we do have a right triangle whose legs are kind of known and then we're going to talk about the hypotenuse in a little bit okay so what is that length that we're looking for here what can I use to find that length, right? Well, looks like the base of the square is tangent to the parabola, okay? But don't worry, we're not gonna use calculus here. We're just gonna keep it very simple. Okay, so since that segment, the base of the square is tangent, we can actually look at the highest point on the parabola, okay? And then from there, we can deduce that length or height, if you may, okay? So let's go ahead and figure that out. Well, we know the equation for the parabola is given, y equals negative x squared minus x. So how do we find the, how do we find the highest point on the parabola? Well, that's gonna be the vertex, right? How do you find the vertex of a parabola? Well, we have a formula. The formula is, I'll probably have to change colors here. The formula is y equals uh, a x squared plus bx plus c the vertex is given by negative b over 2a. But of course, this is just the x-coordinate of the vertex. Then we're going to use it to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so let me go ahead and apply that here. We can call that xv if you want for the x-coordinate of the vertex. xv is going to be from here, negative b, which is 1, divided by 2a, which is negative 2. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative 1 half. Now, how do you find the y-coordinate of the vertex? There's a formula which is 4ac minus b squared divided by 4a, but we don't really need that. We can just go ahead and substitute negative one-half into the equation to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. That's going to be negative x squared. If you square negative one-half, you get one-fourth, so that's going to be negative one-fourth minus x, which is negative one-half. So that's going to turn into a positive sign, and from here, we're going to be getting the y-coordinate of the vertex as one-fourth, which is positive one-fourth, right? Okay, so this length is actually one-fourth, the length that we're looking for. So this is one-fourth. Awesome. Now, how do we use that information? Well, now we can set up the Pythagorean theorem, okay? And what does that look like? Well, I do have a right triangle here. Let me go ahead and shade it. it may not be very visible here in the white area, but it's going to look like this x squared plus x plus one-fourth squared, and that's going to equal the hypotenuse. Now, what about the hypotenuse? Well, the hypotenuse 
is actually the radius of the quarter circle. And we know that the radius of the quarter circle is 1, so the hypotenuse will be 1, and 1 squared is 1. So that's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this quadratic equation. So we're going to expand it. That's going to give us x squared plus 2ab is going to be 1 half of x plus 1 fourth squared is going to be 1 16th, and then you're going to subtract 1, and all everything will be equal to 0. Let's go ahead and simplify this. 2x squared plus 1 half of x. 1 16 minus 16 16 is going to be negative 15 16, and that is going to equal 0. Now, we can just go ahead and multiply both sides by 16 to get a better equation. And that's going to give us 32x squared plus, if I multiply this by 16, I get 8x, right? And from here, I get minus 15. Okay, awesome. Now, this is a quadratic equation, and it's easily solvable. Remember, in some other puzzles, we were getting cubic equations. We were getting quartic equations, and those were more complicated. Okay, but this is quadratic. That's why I consider this an easy geometry puzzle in that sense. Okay, so how do we solve this? Let's go ahead and use our uh, formula, the infamous quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of. By the way, I say plus minus, but if you think about it, you notice that this equation has a positive and a negative solution. So but I don't need to worry about the negative one because that's not going to be length for sure. So let's go ahead and focus on the positive solution only. Negative b plus minus or just plus square root of b squared, which is 64, minus 4 times 32 times negative 15. And negative 15 is just going to make that positive 15. Okay, when you multiply and divide it by 2a, which is equal to 64. Okay, let's go ahead and solve, uh, simplify this expression here, negative 8. Now, notice that I do have a 64 here, and at 2 times 32, you can easily take it out as an 8, right? So, if I factor out an 8, 4, let me show my work there, all right? So, I'm just going to go ahead and factor out a 64 here, so it's going to give me 1. From here, I took out a 2 and a 32, so I end up with 2 times 30, 15, which is 30, okay? Awesome. This really simplifies the process because I'm making my numbers much, much smaller. So I don't have to deal with the square root of 64 times 31. Okay, now from here I get negative 8 plus, okay, the square root of 64 is obviously 8, and we end up with 31 under the radical, and that whole thing is divided by 64. We can just go ahead and divide everything by 8, and that's going to give me negative 1 plus the square root of 31 divided by 8. So that's going to be the side length for our square, which is x, right? But we're supposed to find the area of the square, so let's go ahead and find it, and obviously the area of the square is just x squared, easy, right? Okay, and we need to square this expression, so let's go ahead and square this expression, and then we're going to divide it by 64, obviously. Let's go ahead and simplify this, and we'll get the area. If you square that expression, you're going to get 3 minus 2 root, oopsies, that's not a 3, that's a 31, I misread my own writing, okay. So it's going to be a 31 minus 2 root 31 plus 1 all over 64. And then the area is going to equal 32 minus 2 root 31 over 64. And let's call that A. And the area will be, if you divide everything by 2, you'll get 16 minus root 31 divided by 32. Okay, that'll be the area of the square. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe and see you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.